Hmm, I don't know. Deploying the same app to App Engine, Cloud Functions and Cloud Run with no code changes? I'm skeptical. <laughs> no, it's true. I can do it. I'll show you. Okay, this had better be good. Welcome to this extended episode of Serverless Expeditions. We're going to pick up from right where our previous video left off, helping you pick the right serverless platform. We're back with our friend Wes, who introduced that sample app and ran it locally. I'm going to keep him honest by making him show that he can really deploy it to all three platforms today. Are you ready, Wes? Thanks, Martin. Just what I wanted to do, a live recorded demo in front of thousands of developers. No pressure, Wes. Uh, the main idea is to show folks out there that if you create the right scaffolding around your app, you can shift your app from one platform to another. That's right, Martin. When doing your due diligence exploring App Engine, Cloud Functions, and Cloud Run, you're going to pick the right one for your needs. And if those needs change, our platforms are similar and flexible enough so you can switch if need be. In other words, you can't really make a mistake here. All right. I can't wait. Can we get started? Yep. I've got a Node.js and Python versions of this app. We'll start with the Node deployments first. There's a little bit of drama with Python, but we'll do those afterwards. Of course, if you're not interested in Node, you can skip ahead to the Python part of the show right now. In either case, the code is in the same repo. We'll link to all of the resources afterwards, so let's just look at those deployments now. To get started, make your way to the repo. All of the nebulous serverless sample apps are here, but we're only interested in cloud today. So click into the cloud folder, then choose your dev environment, say node.js. You can scroll down, get familiar with the files, and get a preview of the different deployments, but we're not set up yet, so go back up and click on a code lab. There's one consolidated code lab for node, but all of the Python ones are split up. So pick the one for the deployments you're interested in. We're not doing any code lab word for word, but we are going to follow the setup instructions. This first part is just an overview and an optional survey. Moving on, part two is where the real work begins. You need to go to the cloud console and create a new project or reuse an existing one. If you're new to GCP, every app is associated with a project, which is a logical container for all of the cloud resources used by your app. Mine's already set up as you can see here, so pause now to get yourself set up and enable billing. We'll talk about costs in a minute, Moving on, part three is about enabling services. The sample app demos how to use the Cloud Translation API, so we have to enable that. We're going to deploy to App Engine, Cloud Functions, and Cloud Run, so those need to be enabled as well, along with the artifact registry for registering Cloud Run container images. There are two ways of enabling all five. The first is on the command line with the gcloud command, and the other is in the Cloud Console. As a developer, I'm not patient enough to dig around the Cloud Console to enable things, so I'm just going to copy the one-line command. I'm not always on a computer with the Cloud SDK installed, so I'm going to do this in the Cloud Shell, which is a lockdown mini VM tied to my project available from any browser. From anywhere in the Cloud Console, click on the Cloud Shell icon at the top right. It brings up a Linux shell with many common dev tools pre-installed. Let's paste that command to activate all of our services. And boom, it works. Before going to the code, a word on costs. All of the services, App Engine, Cloud Functions, and Cloud Run have a free tier, as does the Cloud Translation API. So running the app shouldn't incur any costs. But there are build and storage costs. Minor, but they're there. So check to see if you have a free Cloud Storage tier in your region afterwards, and delete those build files or shut down your entire project to be safe. The final setup is in step four. To get the code, go back to the repo and get the zip file or just run git clone like we're doing now. We're not running locally, so we can skip checking the local dev environment in step five. If you want to review the code in step six, go for it, but it's not necessary. This video is all about deploying, so we're skipping this part too. The rest of the video assumes that we're always starting from this point where you've got a project, enabled billing, enabled all the services that we're going to use, and you have all the code ready to go. Are you ready to start deploying? All right, let's go. Okay, deploy the Node sample app to App Engine. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? As you can see from the readme, nope, it's ready to go as is. The command to deploy to App Engine is gcloud app deploy, so just run it. 
Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. App Engine is regional, so you'll be prompted for the region on your first deploy, but it's the only time you'll be asked. Mine has already been set to US Central, and that's why you didn't see it. The only thing unique to App Engine here is the app.yaml config file where you specify the runtime, and you only need to choose a supported runtime, say, Node 16. Now that it's deployed, hit up the target URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Node app is successfully deployed to App Engine. OK, deploy the Node sample app to Cloud Functions. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? As you can see from the readme, nope, it's ready to go as is. The command to deploy to Cloud Functions is gcloud functions deploy. Paste the entire command you see in the repos readme or in the code lab. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. Because there's no config file like App Engine, the command line is a little longer. You have to specify a function name, say translate, a supported runtime, say node 16, the entry point, the trigger type, and a flag allowing for unauthenticated traffic for this demo. A cloud function is regional, so you'll be prompted for the region on your first deploy, but it's the only time you'll be asked. Mine has already been set to US Central 1, and that's why you didn't see that. Now that it's deployed, hit the HTTP trigger URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Node app is successfully deployed to Cloud Functions. OK, deploy the Node sample app to Cloud Run. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? As you can see from the readme, nope, it's ready to go as is. The command to deploy to Cloud Run is gcloud run deploy. Paste the entire command you see in the readme or in the code lab. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. Because there's no config file like App Engine, the command line is a little longer. You have to specify a service name, say translate, a flag allowing for unauthenticated traffic for this demo, a flag specifying we're deploying from source code instead of an already built container image, and that we want fully managed cloud run. You'll be prompted for a region to deploy the service to if it's not on the command line. So that's why I put US West 2 on my command line so it's completely non-interactive. Now that it's deployed, hit the service URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Node app is successfully deployed to Cloud Run. OK, deploy the sample app to Python 2 App Engine. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? Yep, from the readme, you can see there's only one extra step. Run the pip install command to copy or vendor or self-bundle the required third-party libraries to the lib folder. Paste the entire command from the readme or code lab. Once that's done, we're good to go. The command to deploy to App Engine is gcloud app deploy, so just run it. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. App Engine is regional, so you'll be prompted for the region on your first deploy, but it's the only time you'll be asked. Mine has already been set to US Central, and that's why you didn't see it. Now that it's deployed, hit the target URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Python 2 app is successfully deployed to App Engine. OK, deploy the sample app to Python 3 App Engine. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? Yep, you can see from the readme there's only one extra step. Edit the app.yaml file to switch from Python 2 to 3 by enabling the Python 3 runtime and deleting all the other lines. Once you save, you're good to go. The command to deploy to App Engine is gcloud app deploy, so just run it. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. App Engine is regional, so you'll be prompted for the region on your first deploy, but it's the only time you'll be asked. Mine has already been set to US Central, and that's why you didn't see it. The app.yaml file is unique to App Engine and no other serverless platforms. Now that it's deployed, hit the target URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Python 3 app is successfully deployed to App Engine. OK, deploy the Python 3 sample app to Cloud Functions. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? Not really, but the readme has an optional step. You can delete the app.yaml and appenginconfig.py files and the lib folder if you have one. None of these are used by Cloud Functions. The command to deploy to Cloud Functions is gcloud functions deploy. Paste the entire command you see from the readme or the code lab. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. Because there's no config file like App Engine, the command line is a little longer. You must specify the function name, we'll call it translate, a supported runtime, say Python 3.10, a trigger type, and a flag allowing for unauthenticated traffic for this demo. 
A cloud function is regional, so you'll be prompted for the region on your first deploy, but it's the only time you'll be asked. Mine has already been set to US Central 1, and that's why you didn't see it. Now that it's deployed, hit the HTTP trigger URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Python 3 app is successfully deployed to Cloud Functions. OK, deploy the Python 2 sample app to Cloud Run with Docker. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? You can delete the app.yaml and appenginconfig.py files and the lib folder if you have one. None are used by Cloud Run. The command to deploy to Cloud Run is gcloud run deploy. Paste the entire command from the readme or code lab. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. Now, because there's no config file like App Engine, the command line was a little longer. You have to specify a service name, say translate, a flag allowing for unauthenticated traffic for this demo, a flag specifying we're deploying from source code instead of an already built container image, and that we want fully managed Cloud Run. You'll be prompted for a region to deploy the service to if it's not on the command line. So I put US West 2 on my command so it's completely non-interactive. Now that it's deployed, hit the service URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Python 2 app is successfully deployed to Cloud Run with Docker. Okay, deploy the Python 3 sample app to Cloud Run with Docker. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? Yep, from the readme, you can see there's only two extra steps, the first of which is optional. You can delete the app.yaml and appenginconfig.py files and the lib folder if you have one. None are used by Cloud Run. The most critical change is to edit the Docker file, replacing the Python 2 base image with the one for Python 3. Once that's done, you're ready to go. The command to deploy to Cloud Run is gcloud run deploy. Paste the entire command you see in the readme or the code lab. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. Because there's no config file like App Engine, the command line is a little longer. You have to specify a service name, say translate, a flag allowing for unauthenticated traffic for this demo, a flag specifying we're deploying from source code instead of an already built container image, and that we want fully managed Cloud Run. You'll be prompted for a region to deploy the service to if it's not on the command line. So I put US West 2 on my command line so it's completely non-interactive. Now that it's deployed, hit the service URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Python 3 app is successfully deployed to Cloud Run with Docker. Okay, deploy the Python 3 sample app to Cloud Run with Cloud Build Packs. Is there any special config setup for this deployment? Yep, from the readme, you can see there's only two extra steps, the first of which is optional. You can delete the app.yaml and appenginconfig.py files and the lib folder if you have one. None are used by Cloud Run. The most critical change is to delete the Docker file. Once you're done, you're ready to go. The command to deploy to Cloud Run is gcloud run deploy. Paste the entire command from the readme or code lab. Like the other deployments, it should take under a minute. Let's discuss a few things about this deployment while we're waiting. Now, why did we delete that Docker file? That's the beauty of build packs. You don't need a Docker file or need to know anything about containers or Docker. The build pack system introspects your app and dynamically builds a virtual Docker file for you. This means those unfamiliar with Docker or containers can also use Cloud Run. Because there's no config file like App Engine, the command line was a little longer. You have to specify a service name, say translate, a flag allowing for unauthenticated traffic for this demo, a flag specifying we're deploying from source code instead of an already built container image, and that we want fully managed Cloud Run. You'll be prompted for a region to deploy your service to if it's not on the command line. So that's why I put US West 2 on my command line so it's completely non-interactive. Now that it's deployed, hit the service URL and make a translation. Congrats, the Python 3 app is successfully deployed to Cloud Run with Cloud Billpex. Wow, I didn't believe you at first, but you actually did it, Wes. And while I'm not shocked that you can deploy this app to all three platforms, I was surprised that you can do it with no code changes. Neat, right? Well, admittedly, there's a tiny bit of cheating due to some Cloud Functions if dev code, and you wouldn't code like that from the ground up, but it does provide that flexibility. Sounds good. Uh, now, everyone's probably wondering how they can try these deployments. Are there any guides? Definitely. Go to the repo. Not only will you find the code, but you'll also find links to all of the code labs guiding you through all of these deployments. The one for Node is all in one, but the Python ones are broken out separately due to the extra tweaking that must be done to configuration out of the box. Thanks for that pointer. Uh, now, everyone can deploy this app to whatever serverless platform they want. Uh, are there any next steps, Wes? 
Yes, the app we shared uses a cloud API. The repo also has other samples that show you how to call non-cloud Google APIs from serverless. For example, there's an app using the Google Sheets API and another one using the Google Maps geocoding API. Hopefully we'll add more in the future and maybe you and I can uh, film another video covering these soon. I'm looking forward to that, Wes. If you, the viewer, have any questions for us about what we covered here, please let us know in the comments below. Also, let us know what you'd like to see in future episodes. Till then, happy serverless journeys!